The title of this next talk is Luster and Kerberos in Theory and in Practice. Uh, the speaker is uh, Sebastien Buisson uh, from Boulle. Uh, he's been working in Boulle's HPC research and development for age eight years. Uh, he's now integrated into Atos Group. Is that Atos or Atos? Right on, ATOS Group. Um, he's a technical leader in charge of parallel file system aspects, has been focused on security aspects for the past year, uh, and uh, has offered up patches for uh, his Kerberos solution, which he's going to talk about now. Ladies and gentlemen, Sebastian Biswan. Well, I totally fucked that up. It's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Um, okay, um, uh, so ATOS, I don't know, um, Acquire Bull, uh, but the name Bull remains for, uh, as a brand for the HPC activity. So uh, this is why it is still Bull on the, on the slides. Uh, that being said, let, let's get started. Um, um, current trend in HPC is to open and share computing resources. For instance, uh, near Paris, we have the GCC cluster um, that is open to all European scientists eligible to the PRICE program. Uh, but in that case, uh, how can we control who can do what on the cluster? Hopefully, uh, control freaks invented Kerberos, uh, which, is, which is one of the most famous ways to allow safe communications over an untrusted network. Uh, by providing authentication and encryption. Uh, in the case of Luster, uh, that would help control which nodes can uh, mount Luster and which users can access the files. So we will see how in this presentation. Here is the agenda. Uh, first of all, um, I will explain the basis of Kerberos. Uh, so that people who, who are not familiar with the, with the um, with Kerberos can follow the rest of the presentation. Then uh, we will uh, see um, uh, the common history of Kerberos and Luster. After that, uh, how uh, we can configure Luster with Kerberos, and um, when it's done, uh, what do we get, especially in terms of performance. Okay, so um, Kerberos principles. Um, when Luster is operated on an open and shared cluster, um, you may want to control who can be part of your uh, file systems. Uh, currently, in Luster, whichever node that has access to the interconne interconnect network and that also knows the names of the MGS and the file system, uh, well, first, can um, mount Luster as a client, uh, which means that then you only rely on uh, Unix rights on possibly SE Linux um, to control uh, what kind of data this node can access. Uh, but more importantly, um, uh, this node, uh, we, would, we could call it an intruder node, uh, so this node can format uh, a local disk or partition. Uh, and then add it uh, to an existing Luster file system, which means that legitimate users uh, will then store part of their data on that intruder disk, uh, even with, uh, without not noticing it. And so it will give uh, full access to, to the data on that disk uh, for the root of, the, of this machine. Uh, Kerberos is a possible solution to, to that problem uh, by providing authentication for node and nodes and users. Let's see how it works. Uh, Ker the Kerberos server, server can be seen as a um, trusted third party. Uh, so the, um, the Luster servers on the right side of the, uh, the diagram um, have to authenticate first with this Kerberos server. They will retrieve a service token that will let them mount. Similarly, the Luster clients will authenticate with the Kerberos server, retrieve uh, a service token too, and when the Luster client node will try to mount Luster, 
uh, which will have to provide um, the Luster servers with this service token in order to prove that, is, that it has authenticated successfully with the Kerberos server. And then the, um, the Luster servers will, will let it mount. So this is for the nodes. For the users, uh, this is the same principle. Users has to authenticate with the Kerberos server. Um, they, also uh, they also get a, a service token. Um, and when uh, the user wants to access files, uh, it has to give this token to the MDS server. And if the access complies uh, with the Unix rights, then the MDS will uh, grant access to the files. Um, when Luster is uh, operated over um, an open cluster, when you do not have full control over all the nodes connected to the interconnect network, of if you operate Luster over um, um, a wider area network, for instance, uh, you may want to protect um, data transfer between nodes and uh, avoid man-in-the-middle attacks. Uh, currently in Luster, the uh, checksum functionality is only to protect against um, network data corruption, but an in, um, a man in the middle could uh, intercept packets, uh, read their content, uh, possibly modify it, uh, and rewrite a checksum and send it to the network. Uh, so Kerberos is a possible solution by providing integrity and privacy. Integrity means um, uh, some kind of checksum in, but that is done with a private key, so that only the owner of this private key can write the checksum. And uh, privacy, of course, means encryption. Here uh, you have a table with the various Kerberos flavors. So you have Kerberos 5N, uh, that is for uh, authentication only, Kerberos 5A for partial integrity, Kerberos 5I for uh, full integrity, and Kerberos 5P, uh, the strongest one, for uh, privacy. <coughs> okay. Um, here is an historical background of uh, Kerberos support in Luster. Back in 2010, uh, at Lug. Uh, there was a presentation from PSC uh, explaining how they managed to make Luster 2.0 work with uh, Kerberos uh, on a production cluster on a wide area network. So at that time, um, Luster 2.0 was properly working with Kerberos. But back in 2013, uh, there was a presentation at LAD uh, from S plus C explaining that Luster 2.4 uh, was not able to handle Kerberos anymore. So one year later at Bull, we decided to test uh, Kerberos support with Luster 2.5. And uh, we first noticed that uh, the build system was broken for Kerberos. But even with f uh, when we had fixed this, uh, we got an instant crash uh, when starting Luster with Kerberos activated. So uh, our conclusion at that time was that there was still a lot of work to do. Um, so we, we decided to rebase our work on the Luster master branch. And we realized that, um, for instance, the, the build issues were already fixed. Uh, there were also some patches concerning new kernel API support. Uh, but the thing is that uh, I, I think the Kerberos um, support code in Luster uh, was not really maintained since Luster 2.0, whereas all the code um, that it relies on has evolved a lot. And for instance, uh, there are new components, uh, LWP and OSP, uh, that were not known from the Kerberos code. Um, so at Bull, we, we made a patch to add support for, for these new components in Luster. Uh, there were also a uh, need for various uh, other fixes in, in several uh, areas of the code. Uh, some of the patches uh, were made by Seagate, uh, some of the patches were made by Bull. Um, uh, uh, hopefully I, I won't go into the, the details of every patch now. Uh, I think we'll uh, talk about that uh, on Thursday. Um, but just to mention that some patches are already landed and some are, are still being reviewed. But hopefully, with all the patches mentioned uh, on that slide, uh, we are now able to run Luster with Kerberos. 
Uh, so uh, le let's configure it now. Uh, well, the, the first thing to do uh, with Kerberos is to declare identities. In the Kerberos lingo, ident um, the credentials are called uh, principles. So you have to declare uh, one principle for every uh, Luster server and client. So Luster MGS, Luster MDS, Luster OSS, and Luster root is for client. Uh, because Kerberos relies on network address for authentication, you have to use um, the, uh, the, the real network addresses used by your targets and not only the, the host name. Uh, the MDS is a particular case because there is a, a, a component that uses the loopback connection. So for the MDS, you need both principles. And of course, normal users uh, need their own principle. So now that we have declared entities, we have to configure Luster. Um, on this diagram, um, you have uh, on, the right, on the left side the Luster client part, that is to say um, the Luster code responsible for emitting requests, and on the right part you have the, um, the server part responsible for receiving and processing requests. All that code lives in, lives in kernel space, of course. Uh, but the thing is, um, all Kerber stuff lives in user space, so you have to make them communicate. Uh, on the client part, um, you have to configure the request key system tool, so that it will call um, a, a, a command line tool uh, from Luster that, it, that is called LGSS Keyring. So this tool basically is responsible for building uh, identities on the local node. This identity, these identities are passed uh, to the kernel space code and then sent over the network with every request to the um, uh, Luster server part. On the server part, you have to start a uh, user space daemon called lsvcgssd and this daemon is responsible for uh, request authentication. Um, last thing I add on this diagram is all the checksumming, integrity, and privacy stuff is directly called uh, from the um, Luster kernel code. Okay, that now we have the identities, we have configured Luster, so the only remaining thing is to tell Luster that we want to use Kerberos. This is done thanks to the lctl conf param. Uh, command that you have to run on the, um, on the, on the MGS server. Uh, so this is the MGS that holds the, uh, the Kerberos configuration for all the file systems. You can refine this configuration uh, on a per um, network or um, communi communication channel basis. And uh, if you specify null, it means that you do not want to use Kerberos, which is the default. Uh, so, the, the MGS is a particular case because if you want, if you want to Kerberize the communications between uh, the Luster servers and clients and the MGS server, you have to use the MGS sec uh, mount option. So, if you, when you start a server or mount a client, you tell you want to use this Kerberos flavor with the MGS. <coughs> So now let's play with Kerberos. Um, uh, a little slide on our hardware configuration. So we use Red Hat 6, uh, Kerberos MIT v5, uh, Luster 2.7.0 plus all the patches I mentioned earlier. Uh, in order to try to ease Kerberos configuration, we dedicated one node per Luster role. So we have one MGS, one, M uh, one MDS, one OSS. Each uses RAM disk storage. Um, uh, we have one client node with uh, 12 cores and 24 gigs of RAM and a simple Infiniman QDR network interconnect. So as I said earlier, uh, thanks to all the patches men mentioned, uh, the g really good news is that Kerberos uh, support is uh, now functional. Um, it, it is for all Kerberos flavors on every communication channel and uh, for all uh, Luster servers and clients. Uh, but because we are HPC, uh, uh, performance matters, so let's have a look at the impact of Kerberos over performance. <coughs> uh, first test we run is with IOR, the well-known uh, well benchmark IOR. 
so this is for data performance. Here you have the write performance with 12 tasks uh, that match the 12 cores on the client node. Um, the first thing to notice is that um, KRB5N and KRB5A, uh, so authentication and partial integrity, have no impact over performance. Um, the performance drop is uh, around 50% uh, with um, full integrity and between 75 and 95% uh, with uh, privacy, uh, depending on the encryption algorithm. So it hurts. Uh, it hurts as well in, uh, for the read performance. So the conclusions are the same. Uh, now, if you want to understand what's going on, uh, let's have a look at the CPU usage on the client node. Here we did some profiling thanks to the perf tool. On the right, you have the C function names. Uh, other, uh, so the purple bar, uh, gathers all the C functions that are um, there to process IOs on the, on the client node. Um, so we can see no difference between null kb 5 n and kb 5 a In fact, there is a, a little uh, difference uh, because um, a processing authentication uh, has a little impact, but as um, data requests are massively parallel in Lustre, uh, the impact of a performance uh, is, um, is insignificant. Uh, we can see that with uh, full integrity, 35% um, of the time is dedicated to SHA transform, and uh, with uh, KB5P, uh, more than 60% of the time is dedicated to encryption and decryption. So uh, this, uh, uh, this shows that um, with Kerberos, uh, the luster activity on the client node becomes uh, CPU intensive, and this is why it hurts um, data performance. Now, if we want to compare uh, the various encryption algorithms, uh, we can see that with AES, AES-128 or AES-256, uh, uh, so uh, look at the green and um, red-orange uh, bars, uh, the, the time required to process um, encryption uh, is, um, is really smaller with AES. This is thanks to the AES-NI hardware instructions uh, that are embedded in the Intel processors. So this, is, this dates back from uh, 2010 and the Westmere processors, I guess. So uh, we, we, we can explain that uh, the performance is better with AES uh, because simply the, uh, it requires less CPU time to, 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 do, to do the, the encryption and decryption. So uh, uh, I would advise to use AES-256 because it's, uh, it has a stronger security and it, uh, it performs better. Uh, just a quick word on the CPU usage on the OSS node. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, very similar to what we observe on the client node. So uh, again, the phenomenon is the same on the client and the server part. Now let's have a look at the metadata performance. So we used the um, MD test well-known benchmark, again with 12 tasks. And uh, here in the directory DDP, um, directory pair process mode. Um, uh, it, when uh, we speak about metadata, we can see that authentication has a little impact of a performance. So KB5N, uh, the performance drop is uh, by 5%. With KB5A, it's uh, a drop by 20%. Full integrity, the drop is by 25%. And um, of course, with privacy, the drop is, between, uh, is higher between 40 and 60%. So this is for file create. Um, the, the conclusions are really similar for um, file stats, and again, uh, the phenomenon is the same for, um, for file remove. So again, if we want to understand what's going on, let's have a look at the request wait time on the client node. So the request time is the time the client waits for the server to respond once it has uh, posted uh, a request over the network. We can see that the request time increases with the Kerberos flavor. Um, the thing is that um, 
the, the metadata requests in Luster are uh, completely serialized except for stats. Uh, so the latency that is induced by uh, Kerberos, uh, we suffer from it uh, for every request. And then it explains why um, the performance uh, drops with, uh, with um, Kerberos, especially in the case of, uh, of Kerby 5P. And again, if we want to compare the various encryption algorithms, uh, we can see that the request wait time is uh, lower with um, AES, again, thanks to the AES and I hardware instructions. So uh, uh, the conclusion is the same, AES-256 is the best choice. Okay, this is time for the conclusion. So uh, again, the good, really good news is that uh, Kerberos support is back in Luster. Uh, for every uh, Kerberos flavor, so that's really uh, interesting. Uh, another really interesting thing is that um, authentication is really uh, usable on our production system because the impact of our performance, both in data and metadata, is, um, is very modest. Uh, well, when you speak about integrity or privacy, uh, no pain, no gain, so uh, in that case, uh, it hurts performance. Um, there are still work to do. Uh, of course, learn the patches that are still being reviewed at the moment, and uh, possibly uh, update the documentation, uh, so the, the Luster Wiki and the, the Luster Operations Manual to reintegrate um, the documentation about Kerberos that uh, disappeared since Luster 1.8, I guess. Um, that's all, folks. Thank you. Do you have any questions? Hello, I have a few qu I have a question actually. Um, for the the checksumming that you did, what platform did you test that on? Rail six, rail seven? Um what what kind of checksumming of checksumming are you talking about? Uh, the AES uh, 256 and the AES. Yeah, yeah, yeah there it is. Okay, M128. Uh, for instance, here or uh, here. Um, no, it's completely different. Th this is the the this is the um, encryption algorithm used by Kerberos uh, uh, when uh, just before sending data data over the network. So uh, in the workflow. Uh, the client normally prepares its requests, mm -hmm. and just before sending the request over the wire, it will encrypt it. It will encrypt it uh, with the with the algorithm that is imposed by Kerberos, and then on the server side, uh, the packet will be decrypted. The, the reason I'm asking is that those algorithms and newer kernels are accelerated with SSE instruction sets on uh, Intel platforms. So I was wondering if that in influenced it, if okay. it was absent, or what it would look like with those instruction sets. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. The, the, I only tested this free AS128 uh, and AS256. Okay. Alrighty. Just real quick, what was the, <coughs> what's sort of the minimum Kerberos configuration you need to prevent a rogue system from presenting itself as a Luster server, but not pay the penalty for the performance for the other modes? Uh, what's the minimum service that has to be Kerberized in order to prevent the rogue server from well, wh when you decide to Kerberize a, a Luster file system, it means that all communications uh, in the file system will be Kerberized so, uh, by default. So uh, I have a, I, I've, you may have seen, you, you can decide to only uh, Kerberize the, the communications between clients and servers. Mm -hmm. Let's consider that you have servers uh, in a very protected domain, then you may not want to add uh, a Kerberos um, um, overhead uh, for the communications between OSS and MDS, for instance. Uh, the case of the clients, uh, yes, I would recommend to have Kerberos between the clients and the servers because by definition you may have 
less control over the clients. Right. And I think the MGS part is really uh, important too, uh, because if you do not carburize the communication between the servers uh, and clients and the MGS, it means that uh, someone can, could try to temper uh, the, the configuration logs on the MGS and deactivate uh, Kerberos for, for a given file system. Any other questions? Well, thank you. Sebastian, thank you.